Natova, everyone. So happy to be with you. Rabbi Kahana and Cantor Kahana have invited me and asked me, and I'm very, very blessed to um, do some readings for you for our holiday. It's an unusual year, to say the least, and I'm very honored to be here with you today, and I hope that the readings give you some peace and calm. Okay? Okay. So here's the first reading. Wherever you stand to lift up your eyes to heaven, that place is a holy of holies. Every human being created by God in God's image and likeness is a high priest. Each day of your life is the day of atonement and every word spoken from the heart is the name of God. Therefore, the sin of any of us, whether of commission or omission, brings the ruin of a whole world and its train. I was thinking after this reading about how most of my prayer is done outside when I'm walking my little dog, Sadala and I make sure that I look up to the heavens and I say thank you God to be able to walk, to be able to see, to have this little puppy that I love so much do her business as quick as possible so I can get on with my day. And I'm in front of the wonderful, beautiful temple and it feels very peaceful. And I don't know about you guys, but it's hard to feel peaceful these days. I send you all the warmest love.
turning. Now is the time for turning. The leaves are beginning to turn from green to red and orange. The birds are beginning to turn and are heading once more towards the south. The animals are beginning to turn to storing their food for the winter. For leaves, birds, and animals, turning comes instinctively. But for us, turning does not come so easily. It takes an act of will for us to make a turn. It means breaking with old habits. It means admitting that we have been wrong. And this is never easy. And this is always painful. It means starting all over again. And this is always painful. It means saying, I'm sorry. It means recognizing that we have the ability, the ability to change. These things are terribly hard to do, but unless we turn, we will be trapped for years in yesterday's ways. God, help us turn from callousness to sensitivity from hostility to love, from pettiness to purpose, from envy to contentment, from carelessness to discipline, from fear to faith. Turn us around, Adonai. Bring us back towards, towards you. Revive our lives as at the beginning and toward, turn us toward each other. For in isolation, there is no life. This reading, this next reading, is from the poet Michael Blumenthal. I wish I knew him because this is beautiful. I hope you enjoy it. Say you have finally invented a new story of your life. It is not the story of your defeat or your impotence and powerlessness before the large forces of wind and accident. It is not the sad story of your mother's death or of your abandoned childhood. It is not even a story that will win you the deep initial sympathies of the benevolent goddesses or the care of the generous. But it is a story that requires of you a large thrust into the difficult life, a sense of plenitude entirely your own. Whatever the story is, it goes as it goes. And there are vicissitudes in it, gardens that need to be planted, skills sown, the long hard labors of prose and enduring love. Deep down in some long encumbered self, it is the story you have been writing all your life, where no calypso holds you against your willingness, where there are no longer dark caves for you to be imprisoned in where you can rise you can rise from the bleak island of your old story and tread your way home hmm.
here. I was asking Cantor Ida if I could share just a minute about that last reading that Michael Blumenthal um, wrote. It's about, you know, keeping ourselves in the same place and having the same story and always being in that same story. Um, being a victim, always thinking that we can't be something or we never had a chance. It's not true. And for me, those of you out there who know me know that I've had a pretty intense story. Um, four years ago, I lost my husband. I lost my mom when I was 20. There's a lot. But that's not who I am today. And today, I'm healthy. I'm in front of the temple, in front of two of the most beautiful humans that ever lived, who are trusting me to read to you today. So I just wanted to say, we can overcome anything in the moment. I'm not making light of anyone's trauma or problems. I'm just saying that when this year comes along, this Jewish New Year, for me, it's a new beginning. It's always a new beginning, as is every morning when I wake up. It's a new beginning, and we only have today. So as a person who used to live you know, oh poor me, and oh boy, and I really, really need that hot fudge sundae. I'm just saying, I don't need the hot fudge sundae. I have today, and I can make better choices, and I can live in freedom today. I wish you all Shana Tova. I have two Hasidic uh, pieces to read. One is a story, and one is a saying. Okay? So here's the first one. It's a little story. It's very sweet. I think I read this one to you guys last year. There was a villager who, on the days of awe, would pray in the Baal Shem Tov's synagogue. His son was a dull lad who had not learned to read his letters, much less the prayer book. So his father never took him with him. But when the boy reached the age of bar mitzvah, his father took him to the synagogue on Yom Kippur to keep an eye on the, uh, on the boy, lest out of sheer ignorance, he eat on the holy fast day. This boy had a little flute, which he would play while in the field tending his flock. Though his father did not know it, he had taken it with him to the synagogue, the flute and the son. All day long, the boy sat in silence in the house of prayer. During the additional prayer, the boy had whispered to his father, Father, I want to play my flute. Terrified, his father had spoken to him sharply and the boy had subsided. Each time his father restrained the boy. Finally, however, during the con uh, concluding service, the boy forced the flute out of his pocket and blew a blast so loud that all were taken back. When the Baal Shem Tov heard the sound, he shortened the prayer. At the end, this child's flute lifted up all the prayers. Through the strength of his yearning, he played his heart's note perfectly. This was very dear to God, and all our prayers were accepted for his sake. Hmm. <laughs> Keep two truths in your pocket and take them out according to the need of the moment. Let one be, for my sake was the world created, and the other, I am dust and ashes.
Ghost right now because Kander Ida Ray and Rabbi Kahana have asked me to read the words of his precious mom, Alice Lok Kahana. Uh, she was imprisoned in Auschwitz as a teenager. She spoke at a university one day and no one will ever forget it. So I am going to read what she said. I want to tell you the miracles that happened in Auschwitz and the people who despised the Nazis and how they turned around from despising. Here in one story, I met a man in Israel who told me, I was 14 years old when the Nazis came into my house and we had prayer exactly at that moment. And my father said, take the Torah and put it around your body and go out from the room. And the boy went and did exactly what his father said. And he arrived to Auschwitz. In Auschwitz, first they undress you. He went up to one of the Polish people and he said, I cannot undress. I am carrying a Torah. The Torah is the most sacred book we have. The Polish man got scared and he went around saying the boy had a Torah on him. We cannot let him into the crematorium. Soon everyone surrounded the young man. They said to him, you cannot undress. Uh, pretend that you are finding some work in the clothing. Uh, because people undress, they left their clothes on the ground and, and then into the crematorium they go. The young SS soldier who was waiting outside the crematorium, he then said, to them, you must tell me what you are hiding because all of you will die anyhow. And the young SS soldier found out that this little boy was carrying a Torah and he went to the boy and said, listen, I know what you are doing. Listen, every morning you come see me. I'll help you get some food. Don't go to work. And guess what happened? This young man survived. And the Torah survived. And it is in Jerusalem. The moment I heard that story, Alice says, I decided to create scrolls. I don't know how to do it. I didn't know how to do it, but I, I want to celebrate the scrolls. The sanctity has to go with us no matter where we are. So I made the scrolls and each one has a name and I made one in that boy's name. Thank you, Alice. Shana Tova.